Welcome to Two Local Radio. I am your host, the lovely, yeah, the asshole Ray Ray. <laughs> and I'm Chrissy D. Miss Pajuma Juma. Okay. Boobies! Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, we have the return of the sensational CT hip hop artist, Mike Fever! Everybody give it up for him. Yeah. All right, anyway, we're calling him right now as we can speak. And there it goes with the phone. It's ringing. Hello. Hey, is this the sensational Mike Viva? What up now? Hey, what's, what's going on? Chillin', chillin', what's up? Hey, man, you ain't gonna believe this. We we were gonna you know we were scheduled to have your you know your interview your comeback at eleven o'clock. So anyway, we couldn't hear each other. Once again, couldn't figure what the fuck it was. I was putting in wires, taking out wires, and everything. Right? Mm-hmm. What what's the old saying? Keep it simple, right? Right. I forgot the fact that it's a USB. It goes into the back of the computer, so the sound already makes the output. Right. So now all I had to do was plug the mic in, but I had to plug the mic in into the headphone jack rather than the mic jack, and that was it. Right. That was it. <laughs> Here I was, adding wires, taking away wires and everything, and we had a technician the other day doing the same thing five hours. Couldn't figure it out. This time I found it out by accident. I went to put it in the freaking speaker wires and then forgot to plug them in. <laughs> I told him that it was going to be something simple. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes you... Hey, hey, listen, they admitted the well by the state, damn it. So, it's all good. Well, we're glad to have you back on because, you know, we look forward to having you on. We always do. You're very welcome. I told everybody you're the one and only Mike Fever. Give it up for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you and Jack are like, you know, just uh, all right. It, it's okay. You fuck up. It's okay. <laughs> as long as at some point I get to come on, it's all good. <laughs> I can't get it right, but when you do get it right, it makes it that much more fresh. So I mean, I listen. I, I understand. Uh, I get. I don't get mad. I don't get nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's just hey, be here now. I tell like like I tell my daughter, man. You should start that juice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like 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 you said, you know, it's in the future. Yeah, exactly. So, so what's good? How was your night? What? I've never heard of that. That's wow. crazy. Yeah, me neither. And I mean, this is my, uh, I went with my, uh, my two little cousins and my, uh, two little cousins have, uh, one of my cousins have two daughters and then my other little cousin, he brought, um, his girlfriend's little brother. So, they running around Chuck E. Cheese, like, literally, they shut down Chuck E. Cheese. And that way wow. they didn't want to go home. I, I, 
Uh, so, so anyway, if you don't know, you are on two local radio. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you know, we we spoke a little bit last time. I still think it's amazing. I, I was I was telling uh you know my old lady, um, the other day I'm like I just want to sit in the front row and watch him fucking dance and not spill a fucking drop and learn how to fucking do that just to say I could do that. <laughs> he wants to copy you basically. <laughs> Uh, a good majority of your liquor the first time, but once you get to, you know what I mean, the, the curve of the hand right, from there, you can just, you say, experiment with other things. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool how you could do that, because I could never do that. But he wants to do it just to be able to say, I can copy what Mike Fever does, because I can do it too. Because <laughs> he just thinks that's cool. Whenever, like, I'm on stage with a cup in there, if not a half, it's probably like a full cup full. So, you know, I can move around and, you know, it won't move out on the cup too much. But, I mean, I tried to go with a three-fourth cup and I had to, you know, either put the cup down because my hand and got wet or whatever. So I just kind of learned, you know what I mean, put, you know, sip it down to about a half and I can do what I do. That's awesome. I mean, it really is. You know, I mean, I learned that from just driving, like, because I always have some type of container in the car with either coffee or, you know what I mean, some, some, some type of liquid. And I go around curb. I do curbs at about 70 miles an hour. And I get mad if a little drop fell out. I'm like, look, I bought this. I'm not, you no, know, you're not feeling this. So... It's like, yeah, it's just the same theory. You know what I mean? It's like still when I'm bouncing around. But, like, when I'm really bouncing around, I got to put the cup down. Because the chairs and book top and that liquor coming out. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's an amazing talent, man. I, I really have to say that. I mean, it's just amazing in my eyes, so. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, especially when you're driving in the car, you don't want to spill that Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Yeah, that's like gold. That's what I'm saying. Like, you bought, you bought that Dunkin' Donuts look. Don't spill it, you know? But it's too damn sometimes. expensive. You know, you just like, oh, I just put some, I spilled the drop. I don't even want the whole coffee down. Like, like I'm like, no, I'm trying to avoid that. Like, I, I paid a high as a dollar fifty-eight for this damn medium-ass French vanilla white and sweet. I'm going to drink this motherfucker in its entirety. Exactly. And you don't want to drop the spill on you. I don't blame you. I don't either. I love my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Yeah. But I got them right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first we want to know, uh, we want to know who is Mike Fever, and then we're going to play Who I Am. All right, well, um, Mike Fever is a... Uh, you know what I mean? An uh, artist from, you know, Connecticut. Um, been doing this for about, you know, 12 years. You know I mean? Some stumbles along the way. Um, just a, a, a real down-to-earth dude. You know, I'm cocky, but I'm humble at the same time. You know, it's, 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 it's a gift and a curse. Um, you know, I got, I got a, my, my, um... My alter ego is late June. Sometimes they clash. You know, late June is kind of more, you know, almost in your face. I got shot you on TV for no reason. And, you know, my people be like, hey, you don't have to really fight. I mean, I will beat your ass if I have to, but hey, I don't really want to fight. And, you know, my people just, my people calm. Like, he's easy, he's cool, he's easy. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's nothing really to Mike Fever. Like, Mike Fever is your neighborhood Spider-Man. You know, he's just, he's, 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 he's cool. Well, that's good. 
Well, I'm glad we got Mike Fever and we didn't get your alter ego then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't, yeah, you don't want to see him. He gets on some other shit. He's like, why am I on here with him? <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably just laugh at him and be like, okay. <laughs> I guess it's the alter ego. <laughs> All right. Well. All right, man. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you in a minute. Let the listening audience uh, hear your song, Who I Am. All right. <laughs> so these motherfuckers uh, gonna ask me, who am I? Uh, <laughs> who am I, nigga? Uh, <laughs> two mixtapes in, numerous uh, shows. I told y'all niggas, Google uh, me, bitch. Mike Fever, put an H on the end. Uh, <laughs> Listen. It's no lies with poppy, right? To be cool or get cooled down, hockey sight. I play this game authentic, who needs a copyright? What part of the game's authentic? We all copyright. Sean got it from Kane, Kane took it from Run. Me, I took it from all, the earth circles the sun. But lyrically, I'm one of the best writing than Zell Van Bryan. Witness the next Titan, death before dishonor, dishonorable discharge. Ride for my team, don't be fucking with this squad. Who's fucking with this squad? I treat rappers like sex, pussies get burnt. Minus the discharge. Fuck what you oughta say. Here's what you oughta know. Do it for my wifey, my team, city, and daughter, ho. I got my change up. So approach me the wrong way. Permit the Z shells, lean them like waves. Who am I? Mike Fever or the kid late June. Call me Mr. Get Money or Mr. Stay Tuned. Who am I? Mike Fever or Mr. A. The Aloysius P. Swaggerton, now stay with me. Who am I? Who am I? I'm a nigga from Connecticut. Home team, mafia ties, who I'm connected with. Who am I? I'm the nigga that you get to know. Oh, yeah, get to know. Stir the pot, rinse it. All right, that was Who Am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's like one of my favorite joints, though. Like, it's just letting people understand. Like, it's real. Like, it's it's slow. It's slower than a lot of the things that I actually usually do. And like with that song, it's more. It's more of like what the title says. It's who am I? Like, I, I want you to understand. Like the words that are coming out of my mouth. I want you to understand who who am I? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not your average rap or your average artist. Like. I, I do this thing seriously. So, I mean, it's like, that's one of my joints right here. Yeah, yeah, it was a little trippy. Uh, yeah, uh, tri- trippy. I, I was thinking of Michael Myers when I was listening to that beat. Kind of, kind of like, sounded like it. <laughs> yeah, I definitely like yeah. that song. Thank you. Like, but, like, my selection of beats be. <laughs> They 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 rage so much like like I I pick I, I I rap anything like it's just like it has to it has to talk to me if, if the beat can talk to me then nine times I said I'm gonna write something again if I'm forced to write to a beat my my first beat is subpar I'm saying but like when I select the beat I select the beat that's gonna talk to me to tell me what I need to write and then I just sit down and. You know, crap, crap what I do. You are definitely very talented, that's for sure. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, so when in your life did you, was it that point where you just decided this was your destiny, your calling, your what you just wanted to do and you're setting your mind to? Other than being a family um, man, um, <laughs> I think it was my first talent show. Like, I think I was in, what if I was in fifth grade? No, um, yeah, I was in fifth grade. And, you know, we had to pick a song, you know, need to perform in front of the school or whatever. And we did, um, well, we chose uh, Digital Underground, uh, same old song. Like, that was, like, the hot joint that was out. And 
the um two dudes, no, the other three dudes, they backed out at the last minute. But I ended up learning like everybody's verse. Like, well, you mean Humpty Hump and uh Funny E B and Hot Verse and I swear Shock G had a verse on this. Like I ended up learning everybody verse, so if we had a three man group, I I forgot how what excuse me, a four man group I forgot what the name was, but when they backed out, I named the group Me, Myself, and I. It was on Me, Me. And I did that whole song by myself. And my mom and my grandmother was actually in the crowd. They came to see, like, the talent show. And, like, I got so much, like, love. Like, she call it love now, but, like, so many applause and everything from like the parents and my parents and other kids and the thing, whatever. It was like, yo, I can do this. And then I just like I just worked on my craft to get to the point where I could get on the stage and do perform my own stuff and have that same feeling. And then I got like like it just kinda of took off from there. Like I went outside of Connecticut and then went to form other places and, and got that love for sex. And it just, from there, it's like, okay, I can do this. Like, I, I don't, it, it comes so second nature to me. Like, I don't even think about it to do it anymore. Well, we asked uh, Jack Nichols the other day who was, uh, you know, the best, you know the best uh you know performer that he's been on stage with or you know been at the same time with and he said uh i believe he said buster rhymes he was at a show with him now he didn't open up for him and he didn't really get to talk to him but at the same time it was cool that he was you know there who would you say that you've seen uh the, while you were trying to perform or uh, that you would say is like your uh, your prize moment as far as another rapper? Um, uh, it was in oh nine when I opened up for Joe Button. Um, wow. I, yeah, <laughs> it was at a uh, tool place in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, the um the radio station out here, Hot ninety three seven had this uh, thing called the Underground Showdown. And I put my song, Who Got It, into the showdown. And, like, it started in September. And then, the, like, basically, like, the first month that you win is October. Because you run for four weeks straight. So I ended up being Mr. October. When I got there, like, I, um, I was up with, like, uh, Manuel, y'all interviewed him. And maybe he was locked, and he was locked up at the time. So I performed with like some of his people out of at um in Danbury. Uh Chris Webby was on the card. Um there was another like two dudes on the card. And like I just like I did my thing, but it was crazy because like when I was on my set, I guess Joey was coming in or whatever and like he, I, I don't I, I don't know if you stopped to go off and listen. But when I got off the stage, like, you got to go off the stage and go, like, kind of back down to the green room to come back out to the floor where the people are. And he was like, yo, it's shit tough, man. Keep it up. Like, and he quoted one of my lines that I said. I was like, oh, shit. So, that was, like, my prize moment. Uh, that had to be, like, the greatest feeling for, you know, you know, to open up for somebody just by, you know, winning something. And then you know, that artist actually acknowledges you where there's a lot of artists out there that be like, yeah, well, they they did well, but they're nothing like me. So. Yeah, and especially when they came out and told you keep going, that's even better, you know? Yeah, like, and it's crazy because, like, like, Joe, he's, like, my favorite underground artist. Like, I've been rocking with Joe since, like, the first clue that he was on. Just because he's a punk, well, he was, but... He was, I mean, a punchline rapper, so I, I really just, you know, say, gravitated to soul, man. But having to say that, it's like, okay, I'm doing something right. Like, I'm not in that, you know what I mean, that, that mainstream underground or that major, mainstream playing market, but I got something that I'm working with behind it. So, I mean, just to get the nod from him, 
it's like, okay, yeah, all right, you can do this. I mean, wait, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come, everything's going to fall in its in, in proper uh, place when the time comes. So, yeah, that, like, that was my, that was my moment right there. Like, after that, like, honestly, there's no local artist that could tell me nothing. So I, had, I had an industry dude that's underground that right now that really, you know what I mean, gave me that, that, that pat on my back that I needed from somebody other than you know, people in my squad. All right. On that note, we're going to hear a little of uh, Who Got It. All right. I let the swag have it, gather round peoples, it's the players and don't really mad at me, cause it's swag like you came over here, don't swag match it, I'm full of baby, I let the swag have it, gather round peoples, it's the players and I'm gonna get swag up, so I'm gonna back up, I wanna have to stop me for the phone, back it up, I don't shoot for the feet, keep the back it up, waiting for the time to chase someone on, I'm gonna swag for them all, too bad you can't on, I'm gonna throw them in my hands, try to hold the outside, I'm gonna change the outside, Wow, that was deep. Yeah, it was. Especially, especially you say, uh, I don't rock chains. That's like slavery. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's the line that he quoted right there. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That is it deep. Was like, like, it was crazy. He was like, did she just say you don't rock chains for the stupid slavery? I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. And uh, so, like I said, that like that song, that song is that that's my shit right here. Like I love, I like, I love it. I love the beat. The beat is from a producer out in um, Chicago. Um, like the, the the flow on it is straight. It got that. You mean that? That kind of club thing going to it, and then Joe co signed it, so it was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's why I made me want to get up and dance. That was a really good beat. I liked it. Thank you. You missed it. We had uh, we had uh, models from uh, Bridgeport. Mhm. Mm last night we had a uh, brick house. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Great bunch of ladies, real nice and everything. You should have came on, been like, "Yo, what's up?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, hopefully, hopefully, listen to the night, jump there, and you know, you know what I mean, the, the choice, and we collab. Because I mean, literally from Bridgeport, I'm only thirty minutes away. So, and I mean, the way I drive, it'll take me about twenty minutes to get out there. So it's nothing. <laughs> Let's not try to get him in trouble with his wife now, honey. 
No, but uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but we we asked Jack the other day, um, you know, because uh, we explained that the, you know this uh, you know brick house is owned and operated by women. Mm-hmm. You know, business women, and he turned around. And he's like, "Well, business women to me are sexy." That's what he said. So I told him, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like I like I like a business woman. It goes down. <laughs> well, when he said that, that made me feel good as a woman to know that he's one of those guys that says, "Yeah, you know, it's fantastic to see a woman own her own business and be able to do for herself." You know. Mm-hmm. So that made me feel good as a woman because all these years, you know, for so many years back when, like, our parents, grandparents, were were you know young and stuff. It was basically always the husband went out to work and the wife stayed home and the man made the money and the woman just stayed home. Nowadays, women have the right to work and they have the ability to do that stuff. Yeah, and I mean, that, that's the time, that's the, the turn of time, but, like, I mean, you know what I mean? My thing is, if both, both people can get that money, get that money. Like, that's just what it is, like... The way the world is now, you can't survive on the men just working or the female just working. Both, everybody got to work. So it's like, corner, my thing is corner the market. If you got that entrepreneurship in you, get that money. And then find out all those, you know what I mean, underground grants that they don't want to really post up, but there's money out there. Go get that money and do what you need to do. And, you know what I'm saying, work for yourself to, to uh to fight for yourself, to fight for yourself. And I mean, at the end of the day, if you do what you do, you're going to be happy or disappointed with yourself. Yeah, exactly. Besides, not all women belong in the kitchen because some, frankly, can't cook. <laughs> bro, bro, bro. <laughs> that is definitely true. You know, I you all cook many right. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, explain to us a time in your life. I feel like you're on like an well, you are on an interview, but I feel like you're on a, like a job interview because I'm like explain to explain to me a time when you really had to uh, you know work the crowd and use your you know critical thinking to get them on your side rather than. You know, you had them from the get-go. Because it's hard as a CT artist, period. And shit, 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 any artist, whether it's myself or, you know, Nichols or Miles, whoever, it's already here. Hey, man, you're breaking in and breaking out. I'm driving through, uh... Some area. I should be good in about one minute. Are you good right now? I can hear you now, but now I couldn't hear you for a oh. second. <laughs> can you repeat what you said, please? I'm telling you, like, I don't even But, um, no, like, what I do is, like, I don't really, I don't really, I don't really think about the music. All right, all right. We're, we're, we're going to wait, we're going to wait the minute here. We're going to pause for a station identification okay. so I can have a cigarette. There you go. Okay. Ah, uh, feels good. <laughs> Tell you music right now. I'm sitting here thinking about that music's playing through my head right now. That's how much that that song just got to me. It was just a good song, you know. Thank you. I mean, I, I love it. I try to make feel good music. So, I mean, if you if you can add a have some part of the chorus in your head or add a beat in your head alone, it it it, it all works to me. Definitely. So, you know. so let's try. Let's try again. Let's go rewind, and let's uh, mm-hmm. go back to that question. Name a time where you know the crowd just wasn't into it. It wasn't you. They just weren't into it, and you had to use uh, improvision, critical thinking, to get them involved or get them. Was there a time that I'm sure there was a time at some point? Yeah, no, I was, um, I did, <laughs> excuse me, um, 
the tcmusic.com, it was a show in Bridgeport. And, I mean, you had some people, like, I was, like, really one of the newcomers on that, like, on that card. So you had, like, a, you had some people from um, Bridgeport that was out there, some people from, you mean, the surrounding areas, or people that just been rocking with the whole, you know what I mean, ccmusic.com or the nymusic.com movement. So, you know, coming out there, my thing is, all right, I'm, I'm really going to work the crowd. Let me see you in here. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm from Harpers by the way of Danbury, so I know Harpers not in there. So where Bridgeport at? You know I mean, okay, all the Bridgeport people start shouting. Okay. You know what I mean? Where the Waterbury people at? All right. You know what I mean? Where the New York? I know we got some New York heads in here. So now I just shouted out everybody in a certain sense, and now I go into whatever my first song is. You know what I'm saying? And like with that show, it was um a song that I like I think only performed once was uh Get Money. Like that's how I end up approaching the situation. But like when I go out of state, I end up and that's how I actually learned it from performing out in Manhattan and I shut out all the boroughs. 'Cause I'm not, I mean, I'm not from there, so I mean I'm already looked at as an outsider anyway. So once I you mean Work the crowd that way. I'd be like, you know, where are all of them at, man? Where my people off a Linux fab at? And you know what I mean? You got everybody that's uptown. They going to shout that out. I'd be like, oh, okay. But Harlem sounds, you know, harder than Brooklyn. Where my flat foot of Sherelle people at? And I mean, that's how I end up working the crowd from being, you know what I'm saying, from out of state or even in state. Uh, I'm sure. Saying. Would you say uh, you have a harder time in performing in New York or in Connecticut? Connecticut. Oh, really? I fear New York because you're an outsider. Now, in Connecticut, I'm going to say New York, the Jokers get you the most greatest response if what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing. What I mean by that is, is you got a club song, then your club song itself. Not your performance, not who you came with or who you didn't come with. Your song itself that rock that club. If you lyrical, then all the lyrical people better feel you. Because if the lyrical people feel you, then the people who don't really listen to rap, but they listen for the beat, they are, they are, they are tuned in because all of the uh, the, the little what the little uh, whispers in the crowd, you know, he, hey, he can't do it a top top. Chicken box? Oh, she showed them. You know what I'm saying? They're going to listen. So, but in Connecticut, it's so clicked up. It's like if you're not a part of their camp or you did a song with somebody from their camp, which won't probably ask because they, like I said, they clicked up, then you have a harder niche going through unless you done put in a track record where you done been in this show, you done rocked out, or you had, like, the dude on stage. She was, you know what I'm saying, performing with him, but his man that shy to get on stage, he thinks she got, you know what I'm saying, some heat with him, and you take him outside, and you murder that ass real quick, and now he go back to his boy like, yo, I don't got to fire with him, you might need to fuck with him. You know what I mean? That's the only way that it comes out in Connecticut, and that's actually a true story. Like, you guys sniffle about that. That shit was crazy. I believe it. I believe it, definitely. I mean... You know, it's got to be tough, I mean. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that, I mean, it, 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 it's the, I call it the Jagged Edge Theory. And, like, Jagged Edge is a group from Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Like, all four dudes are from Connecticut. And, like, everybody doesn't like Jagged Edge because, basically, they left, went to Atlanta, blew up, and then when Connecticut tried to, you know, get them to come back and do a show, they kind of, like, snubbed them, like, y'all wasn't fucking with us when we was out here, you know what I mean? And they actually kind of went to my high school. But, like, the two twins, I forgot what other two dudes went, but the two twins in the group, they went to my high school. Like, you want them to come back to the radio station at the high school or come do a show in Connecticut, they like, fuck y'all, like, y'all didn't represent us when we was here struggling, why the fuck we going to do whatever da 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 with y'all now? So it's like everybody in the state end up having that same theory 
and none of us are really on like that to really have that way of thinking. Exactly, exactly. I mean, like I said, I, you know, up to like when we started doing the radio station, I never really listened to rap. But then I start, we started doing the radio station, and we got different rappers on, and like you, and we've had a couple of the other ones, you know, and it's like, wow, this is great. I like this, you know? Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. If you, if you, if you can get around all the bullshit that you might hear, like, you, it's real people with talent, but if you get the same thing thrown in your face every day, every day, every day, you're not, you know, you're not going to be out to listen to real, real rap, like, you know what I mean? So, that's what it happens. So, I mean, I'm glad that, like, you was able to siphon through all the bullshit and, you know what I'm saying, find a, a, a couple of people that you can actually rock with. That I mean, that's kudos to you, that's kudos to us, that's kudos to two locals. Like, like I mean, it's, it's a win-win across the board. Oh, definitely. I mean, definitely, definitely, you know. All right. Well, on that note, we're going to play Nichols for your thoughts. So that's probably you hey. and you and Jack, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's actually it's me, Jack, and uh, my dude, Sinner. And, like, I mean, I, 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 that's, one of the, like, that's one of my favorite songs. That's not my actual song. Like, like Nichols. Nichols came up with the concept. I mean, I came up with the hook, and I lead off the track. But like, it, it, it's sick. Like, I, and I don't really say like too many songs are sick because I don't want to sound like. I mean, I'm on my own shit. Like, I think on my stomach. But that's one of my shit. That's like, yeah, I like that shit. All right, all right. Well, we're we're gonna let him uh, listen to a minute, and we'll come uh, right back to you. All right. That was a good <laughs> song. <laughs> I'm telling look, well, uh, we working, man. Like, I'm telling you, like, me, me, Nichols, Phyllis, you know what I mean? My dude, Bully, he's down in Alabama right now. You know what I'm saying? My old thing, Country Slim, you know what I'm saying? Sony Benjamins, like, 
my my dude uh, Black. You know what I'm saying like we work like like it's it's it's, it's, it's amazing. Like we got we got a catalog in Jack computer and and Sony's computer that's bananas. Like we work so like um I'm I'm on the interview representing myself and I'm representing my team though and I, I'm I'm trying to let y'all understand like we work. Yes, you definitely do. I mean, we give props to you. We give props to Nichols. We give props to your your your, your boys and everything. You know, I mean, that's an excellent song. I really, you know, liked it. Thank you. Like, and like, you know, usually, like, especially like when you have a, a three man song, you know, somewhere there's a letdown on the track, so you kind of try to squeeze like the the, the weakest verse in the middle or. You put the weakest verse at the end. On that track, if you listen to that track, that track is not weak. Nowhere through nowhere. Like, my verse is strong, Finn's verse is strong, and Nichols murders that thing at the end. Trust me. Like, me and we had a whole debate, because I think that my verse is the nicest verse on it. As an artist, I, you know, I'm going to. But, um, one of my, uh, my cousins, he passed away, Rescue Casino Dow. Like, he would always, he's like, he was the always impartial one. He had set of differences. He'd be like, on that track, he said, that got me. And I mean, I had to hold it. I still to this day, I swear that I got the, I got the verse. But when I sit in, I listen to the, the, the progression of the song. It's like, yeah, all right, yeah, Jack closed that up real nice. Like, I think, like, I think about it like, like surgery. I opened the wound, uh, sentence got the needle and thread and jacked that bitch up real nice so it, it, it left a small scar nice nice you know so well you you know uh, I would have played it all the way through but I figured uh you know let's get more into the interview and more depth into uh, asking you some more questions and whatnot much that I oh, love yeah, to play oh, yeah. music we we want to know about you. Exactly. Oh, no doubt. So, who would you say are your uh, main influence outside of music? Um, outside of music, um, I would say, um, I don't know, because every I mean every influence that I've had some way, shape, or form had to do with music. And, like, I'll give you an example. Like, like, my dad was, you mean, like, you know what I mean, my father picking my role model. But my dad was also in a band as, when he was uh, in high school, you know what I'm saying, he played the bass guitar. He had me and my brother and my sister all in the attempt to play instruments. Um, he was a local DJ. He had music up the wazoo, you know what I'm saying? Nichols, my cousin, you know what I'm saying? He taught me how to, you know what I mean, really like, you know, navigate through the streets, keeping, you know, my head above water. But, you know, he does music. Um, my brother, he's 10 years older than me. He introduced me to my first rat tape, which was MC Light's Eyes on This. So it's like my, my, my influences outside of music, I have none. Because everybody's surrounding me with music. Uh, all right. Now that you mentioned uh, tapes, because you're going back in my days. <laughs> tell me how mad you got when when a tape would break and you had to fix it. Listen, that was the most tedious thing ever. Like, trying to rewind that tape with the, the pencil and <laughs> get the tape on the tape right so that it rolls through and it doesn't like fold and bubble up through the damn tape. And, and listen, I used to hate when a, a, a tape player would eat the tape. I'm like, I could fix it, but I mean, um, you know what? I'm just going to pay the thirteen ninety nine to buy the tape again. <laughs> well, you know what I always did? I always, because I always had the tape players where you tape the tape goes upside down and the uh, tape part sticks out I'd let the tape part stick out of it, 
I just hit rewind mm -hmm. or I hit play and it would just wind all up nice. That's the best way I found to do it. I used to get aggravated. Like, I hate that. Yeah, I, I just kept on messing it up and I'm like, you know what? This is the remix of the song. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go back in my I'll day even you. deeper. It's records. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I I mess with the 45s and the 33s and the, I mean, 33 and the 3rds, like, you know, but like, like I said, my thing was like, and it was weird because like my dad, he bought me the Fat Boys, uh, jail, the, the, the uh, in jail, in jail, hard to fit. He bought me that album and like, I didn't try to scratch on it because I see that I, I like I didn't really like listen to rap until my brother bought me the tape. Cause then by that time, like I had my own radio and like my own little stereo. That was my dad's old radio and shit. And I had my little big house speakers type thing. So you know, I'd be in my room and I got that tape for Christmas in nineteen. I want to say like eighty nine. I got it for Christmas. And I played that tape literally into the tape pop, like, for real. So, it's like, that was, like, that was my thing. But, like, the record, like, I still to this day, like, put on a, I want to put on a record to hear that, that popping sound. Because that's, like, authentic to me right there. Like, I feel away when I hear that popping sound. So, it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I just travel through the ways of listening to music. That's, a, that's an A-track somewhere in the damn house. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. Mm. Dr. Phil, is, is he a good guy or is he full of shit? I think anybody that has a doctor in front of their name with a TV show is full of shit. <laughs> That's just me. Unless you build Cosby, oh, damn it, got the damn doctor's degree after his damn comedy thing. Other than that, if you got a damn reality or talk show, and your name is Dr. Whatever, I'm good with you. I'm not even listening to you. <laughs> and the funny part is he tries to help people. Like one show, um, I happened to watch it one day because one of my uh, old neighbors used to watch it. So I'm sitting over her house and we're watching it. And he's trying to help this girl that's hooked on drugs get off drugs. And I'm thinking to myself, how the heck are you going to help her get off drugs if you've never motherfucking done drugs, you dumb motherfucker, what is wrong right. with you? <laughs> yeah, and then he was trying to tell uh, DMX how he was a bad uh, father because he owed on uh, child support. And I'm thinking to myself, motherfucker, you ain't even got 12 women that want you, let alone 12 kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, listen, they say we're going to do this show, <coughs> and... I need you to read this chapter of this book. Memorize it by Friday, because we're going we're gonna to record it on Friday. We're going to air it on Monday. But we're going to record it on Friday. So read this book for the whole week so you can understand what you're talking about. And then that's just what we're going to do. That, that's my theory on it. <laughs> yeah, he's an idiot. I mean, who the hell is he? This, he's just jealous of DMX because he wishes he could have uh, all those women chasing after him and... Stuff like that and wanting him, you know. I, I, I mm -hmm. just—that's my theory. I—I I, I just threw something random, you know me. <laughs> I, listen, Doctor Phil can go sit on a hot comb for all I care. He's back. <laughs> he can go somewhere. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, he's like I—I no, I, I can't—I can't do like. Like people with reality shows that you're know, saying say they do this and think they do this and but you supposed to be a doc like I like I just went through getting my master's degree and none of my professors and they all doctors got a damn TV show. <laughs> exactly. How many none doctors of them. do you know that are real doctors have TV shows? Uh, <laughs> right. How many do you know that have time to watch a TV show? <laughs> exactly. Right. You, you understand? Like, come on, like. What, and then, and then, okay, your doctor Phil. What is your doctorate in? <laughs> like, what is your credentials? Because, like, most doctors I know, they have you know, okay, Doctor Fever 
Platinum MD or Dr. Siva PSYD. Like, okay, I have a doctorate in psychology. Dr. Phil has no last name and no degree at all. That's because you don't have no real degree. It's all bullshit. I I, I mean, as much as I, you know, I I don't like cops, and I'm not going to lie there. I just don't. Um, I'd still rather trust uh, Steve than Dr. Phil any day because he actually was out there and seen shit. Yeah, I got more respect for Steve. I like Steve all day. (laughs) I I think Steve doesn't want to beat up people, but he can't now because he likes to head to him. (laughs) <laughs> like he just like the head dude. Like when he was on Springer, like he would really I mean like thrash somebody. But now that he got his own show, you know what I mean? Like he don't want to beat up nobody. But I, I watch him all day. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, who who are your main influence in music? Um, my main influences in music, um, was Nichols, of course. Um. Tony Benjamin, um, and it's a it's a it's a crazy story about me and Tony. Like <laughs> me and Tony and Nichols, we was in a group at one time, and like I was young, headstrong, overly I was like overly cocky. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't tell me that I wasn't fire with what I was saying, and I didn't kind of like what was going on with him so I kind of left the group and you know what I'm saying the group ended up disbanding and everything but me and him kind of you there? see the came to a mutual understanding and once like I came back into the fall with Nichols after a couple of years of me leaving like, Tony became a real amazing influence, or especially the way that I write. Because I used to write, like, I used to write in paragraph form. So I could never figure out what a 16 was. Like, my 16s would, I would say they were 16s, and they'd be like, no, they're 14s. Or they're 16s, or 18s. Like, I could never go with it. And I sat down with Tony one day, and he was like, yo, 16 bars? is 16 lines. You just got to make a four beat count to it. And he actually taught me how to construct a verse. So, you know what I mean? Like, he's like one of the greatest influences on, you know I mean, like my writing techniques and my writing style. Um, industry and casino guys, like the recipe, like he showed me how to work the crowd, how to, you know, get up my stage presence and things like that. Um, industry wise, I love the work ethic of Jay Z. Like uh, I just love it. Like lyrically, it would be Big Daddy Kane. Like because lyrically, just the way he, he enunciated certain words was crazy in itself. Like like there's so many words that don't supposed to rhyme that he can make rhyme. So it's like you know listening to him and. You know, hearing what he's doing and taking that with Jay on the you know, on, on the mainstream tip on the you know I'm on tip and then my local influences. I mean that that's what shaped me to be talking to y'all right now. No, I understand that. Well, anyway, we're gonna give you a breather and we're gonna listen to some raindrops. Okay. On that that song is um real dear like that that's 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 it's something different from me all right well I, we've actually never heard it so this is going to be a treat definitely
see these raindrops fall to the ground as pain driven Cause we was like the soda with water and cane mixing Thought about life as a whole, so what I'm leaving out Understand this is my heart, it's really speaking out Met you on the south end, pool in the summer I was coaching football, you standing by the pool I walked by smooth like I had to keep it cool It came back by like it's time to make the move uh, Pretty eyes, nice butt, black stomach, white ups Shorty was the true problem is she was spiked up The homie said I'm tripping, my man is a golden glove I'm from the murder, so tell me can he hold a slug Thug never claimed to be, mommy see the same in me Walked for a minute, she was trying to see the game in me Got to the bus stop and had shorty laughing Took the pen out and wrote a map on his napkin uh. Shit, I'm keeping shit a hundred It's something about mine that got me like I really want it Maybe cause I know she a ride to the death Her sister said he cool, now she sliding with your nephew And school's back around now, the ex in the picture It make homie mad just to know that I am with you Fuck them though, I got you in my vision You that I'm digging and it's you that I'm missing We talking on the phone, feel strange, I can't call it though We ain't even laughing no more, it's straight falling woke Seeing her and she kiss me like, baby, I feel safe here Issues at home, she ain't never felt safe there Told her just stay with me, nothing gon' happen Rubbing on the cheek, wiping her face with a napkin Told me that she had to go, damn, seeing dog smoke Damn, the first time I got my heart broke, damn Damn, that shit's deep. That's deep. I want to know, what's the <laughs> meaning behind that song? Um, The song, basically, I was talking about, like, my, my first true love. Like, um, there was a girl. We went to, to we, we met in the summer. Like, I was going to be a, um, I think I was going to be a sophomore. <laughs> it was either my sophomore or my junior year. And, excuse, no, it was my junior year because I was, I was going to start at playing football and we ran uh, um, a camp for the little kids uh, in the city but in the start and she was a counselor at one of the camps I mean at one of the parks that we was holding the camp at and she, I would walk by the pool she would look at me I would look at her you know you know it's the, the, the kind of like flirting thing like who wants to talk to who first and I mean it's like we ended up you know linking up getting together going out but uh, her boyfriend, who was an ex-boyfriend, you know what I'm saying, like, he played football, and it was actually, uh, come to find out, she went to my rival high school. So, that became a problem, and, like, she had, like, issues at home with her mom and everything, and, like, I mean, I told her, like, I asked my, because I was living with my dad at the time, like, I asked my dad, because, you know I mean, she moved in, and it was like, you know, it was no problem and everything, and... She was so overwhelmed with what was going on at her home, like, she, like, broke up with me. And then, like, there's a third wow. verse to it that basically, like, like, say, like, I saw you at your prom, and say you look good in that dress, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I say something like, timing is key, but you know me, I'm about an hour late. Like, I, I, I missed the opportunity to come back to, you know I mean, talk to her. Then she moved out of state by the time we graduated, and then I, like, I ran back into her like, uh, like uh, maybe like seven years after we graduated, and like that's how I found out all the information about what was going on at the house. And then like I heard the beat, and I was like, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write that song, I'm gonna write her song to that beat, and that's how that shit came out. That's awesome. I really think that's cool. And I bet you she'd, uh, if you saw her today, she'd probably be flattered. Yeah, I said, I actually, um, uh, got her email and I sent it to her and she was like, she cried when she listened to the song. Like, she's married and everything, I like three kids and everything. Um, but she was like, when she heard the song, like, she actually cried. Because, like, she can picture everything that I was saying in the song. So I was like, all right, well, I mean, I just want to let you know, like, that... You know what I mean? Basically, like, basically, I apologize to her for her breaking up with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, you know what I mean? I know it wasn't your fault at the time or whatever. And I didn't see, 
the signs or whatever to make more of an effort to, you know, try to be there for you. But just know that, I mean, I did think about you and say, and since we left high school, I think. And she was like, all right, that's cool. That is cool, though. I mean, you know, that's cool that you did that. I mean, you didn't, you know, you, I, there's no way her husband could even, even if he heard the track couldn't get mad because he'd probably be like that's cool you know that he actually wrote mm-hmm. that for you you know a guy, yeah. a guys could get mad no matter what but that's not yeah, the but point I don't think he would I think he would think it was kind of cool mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean hopefully I mean I don't like the thing is like I don't I, I don't know you know what I'm saying and it's like I mean truthfully I don't care because I mean in, 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 in my eyes like She's always gonna be my girl, and then so that's just what it was. So like I said, how how that summer crush and it just evolved to something. But you know, it's like uh, I like whenever I have if I have deep emotional feelings, like I can't speak them. I can only speak anger feelings. I can't speak emotional like sad sorrow. I gotta write it in a song. So. Like that was the way. Like I released that to get that off to move forward with my life type thing. And it just, I mean, like I said, it came out to be uh, a good song in my eyes. It's, you know, definitely. I mean, that's awesome. It is an awesome song. I do like it. Yeah, they, when I was listening to that, I was thinking of that old rock song that goes, "I got a bad, got a bad, got a bad. I'm too hot for a teacher." When you said she was your. <laughs> Your uh, mm-hmm. counselor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, tell us a time, you know, that you really had to work h- hard, where you thought something was going to be easy, but you really had to work hard in order to get that one track down right. Um. Without a toot my own horn, but that has never happened. No, um, <laughs> and, um, like I try to, uh, um, I, it actually goes back to what you said about uh, Nichols and uh, and Buster. Like I like when an artist can rap fast. Like they don't normally rap fast, but they rap fast. And I told myself I can rap fast. I can rap. I can't rap fast as bones, but I can rap fast. And I heard the um the uh big Fitcher uh, game beat. And I'm like, oh, that's the beat I can rap fast to. It took me no lie about three months to write a sixteen bar verse to that song. Cause I could not get the cadence down to save my life. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Like I got the beat count on. I got this on. I got this right. I had to be talk to me. I'm trying to do it. And it got me so frustrated. Like, I just stopped. Like, I really went to, like, a, a writer's block. Like, I just stopped writing anything. Because I'm, like, I'm so focused on trying to write this verse. It's like, come on. I've got to get it. And I, <laughs> I, I <laughs> But then I finally, I finally got it. And I finally, like, basically just figured it out that I got to use multi-syllable words to make it sound fast. So it's not me really rapping fast, it's just me using, like, better at that, sitting them back, coming at a rap. Like, it's like, okay, I use multi-syllables, and it sound fast. So that's what I did, and I finally, like, I got it. I can do it just for no reason. So you respect artists like Twister? Yes, I, I, I really, like, Twister, shit, yeah, we was a, Get us world, get us world record holder up, like words in a minute. Like I really respect him. Like Bone, Twister, Buster when he get on this thing. Like I don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't like Drake like that, but when he kind of do it, like I, I, I respect your know, artistry for being able to do it because a lot of people can't do it and they want to be like, oh, that sounds stupid. That's not gonna sound hot. Da, 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 da. No, if you could do it, you you do something good with it. Yeah, I, I remember when I used to um, I used to rhyme, which I don't do no more. Uh, but when I, you know, when I used to rhyme a little bit, I had this one thing where I tried to sound like a propeller, 
uh, you know, from a helicopter because I thought that was, you know, like the coolest thing if somebody were to hear it. But uh, mm-hmm. that, that is very hard. And for the most part, I'm just a lazy motherfucker myself. And <laughs> I just think of when DMX said, they're just all high on unleaded gas. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. That's a, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just like, like, if you like, if you could do it, do it to the best of your ability to do it. And if you can't, try it again anyway. And then if you just be like, you know what, fuck it, then, then fuck it. You try. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like, you know, but like I said, like, I, I really, I respect people that could do that. Especially, and if you could do it as fast as Swift the or like the new dude out now, Machine Gun Kelly, like, if you could do it as fast as him and it sounds good, I'm like, yeah, okay. He made me want to, you know what, I might copy your style and write my own verse, sound the same way you do. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I kind of, I do like you. I hear that. All right. Well, you know, before we go, we're going to play the song that really knocked my socks off. And like I said before, my son actually said that, you know, even though he don't listen to rap, that he'd put it in his, you know, MP3 player or he'd put it in his, you know, iTunes or whatever, you know, player, the iPod. Um, So here we go. We're going to play... Mike Fiva's, you know, in my eyes, this is a song that you could rock any crowd with. We're going to play Rainwater. Yeah. Thumb saying my team here, we run shit. You run lips for that dumb bitch and get 
like one fifth of this gun clip. My team here, your team not, my lean mean, and your lean not. I beg a bitch like bro do. She says to me with a screenshot. I be on that real shit. You be on that big shit. She be on that Dre song. You can dive in, but gotta wait shit. Life's a movie. Don't make me edit that script. Okay. Listen up, it's the new Jack City. You know where I'm not kissing that bitch. That brain, that water. Get she feeling my slash, she want that brain. That water. Fuck with you, thought she's real, she getting that brain. That water. That's bottles and buckets. Them top nine chicks be jumping. We fucking in, but never cuffing them. That brain, that water. So here's what I want to know. Mm-hmm. Who down south were you listening to because you don't hear southern style rap in Connecticut? You don't. <laughs> um, nobody. I mean, that that song is my bike club anthem. It is also my um just like I said, the beats talk to me, and when the beats talk to me. I just write what comes naturally. And that joint right there, it, it, it had me with a bounce from the from when the when 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 the beat when the bass line dropped. It just had me with a bounce. So I'm like, okay, I know on this track I gotta have so much energy on it and just just I gotta take it to the next level. I got to. Like nothing nothing can suck with this song, like, because the beat is stupid, so my verse got to be stupider, so <laughs> when, I wrote, <laughs> when I wrote it, I was like, okay, okay, what, what am I feeling here, what am I feeling, and I'm like, you know what, let me really have fun with this one, and it just so happened that the Southern style came out in it, and it just made it more plentiful like because it's still like to me like the song is not one of the regular south songs where it's the beat that gets everybody and then they learn the words i'm still lyrical on it i still have my punchlines in there i'm still giving you that you could dance to it and the beat just grab it makes you want to gravitate and actually listen to the song in its entirety and in, in, in the whole completion other song from start to finish um that's how it just came up with it like but i mean i know i know it does have you know some south influence but it's like i I can't like i can't see somebody no let me let me let me retract that if i had to pick a south rapper to be on the remix of that i think it would have to be ludicrous that's the only person Uh. i can think the right that will kill it. The little Chris and T.I., I think T.I. will go stupid on it. But other than that, I, I'm not that, seeing that, nobody that's going to... That, mm. that song reminded me of, like, Jada Kiss meets 3-6 Mafia shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, I mean, it's but really like, it's really good. But, like, even with 3-6 three, like three, on that, they, they got to come with it. Because... Jada's gonna come on that so tough, so it's like three six. You 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 better you ooh you better tear the club up for real. <laughs> <laughs> if not, we we gonna have to edit your verse out or something. Like that's how I feel with that that track there. So I mean that that's my baby. I mean I like I I, I love that track right there. Yeah, like I said, I I think that you know you could rock any show with that. I I wouldn't see why you couldn't. And it's different, you know, in Connecticut. Now, down south, it would be just, like, on a regular, you know, play. It would still be good, but it would just be on a regular playlist. Okay, that's another, you know. But up north or, you know, out west, you know, like in uh, Cali and shit, I think that would hit it, hit it off. But it's all about location. Right. And, I mean, it's like, like, I mean... Uh, but my thing is, if it's like just if it was to be in a no, because you gotta understand, like especially coming from Connecticut, it's not coming from Austin, it's not coming from New York, it's not coming from you know Jersey. 
is coming from Connecticut. So even down south to be in a normal rotation with your Drake, your T.I., your Little Wayne, and that right there is just to fit in that rotation as something crazy. That 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 right there in itself is like that's a good song. Like I had a DJ up here tell me, especially, and I still use it to this day. And if anybody's listening, yeah, I need to do this because it really helps you out. He told me to when I write my like write a song. So you're gonna write rainwater, okay? Write rainwater. I need what the what I what I he said what to do is. Go on the radio, and somehow, some way, they're going to play a club song during the day. They play a club song during the day, play, find that song, download, well, that's how he wasn't downloading it. He was like, take it or copy it or get the song yourself, just a single of that song. And put that song and your song back to back to each other. If the transition is smooth and there's like no letdown, then you got a song that can play on the radio. If you if the song kind of lets down the mood of like the last song you was playing, you need to write it over if that's what the aim you're going for. And I still use that to this day. Well, I mean, I I, had, I have no doubt that if you had a clean version of the song, of of that song, that. Mm-hmm. That somebody like uh, you know Hot ninety seven or you, you know uh, one of them big you know stations out that way well they were mm-hmm. when I was out there anyway um, you know would play it like nothing they they'd eat it up it's that damn good yeah I'm trying to, I'm actually trying to work on it now to get because um, I need to get I actually need to get a clean version of it and I need well uh, but actually. What I can actually do, I can have Nickel, because there's actually a Nickel computer. I can have them make a clean version of it. But I know, like, a couple of DJs, who, like, local DJs that, you know what I mean, getting some uh, uh, buzz for themselves, they want my um, acapella so they can put it to, um, like, maybe some beats that they made or this or the third. So I got to work on getting the acapellas. But I'm, gonna, I'm really going to try probably, if not... By the end of this month, the middle of next month, to really get the uh, clean version so I can uh, put it into Hot 97 and Hot 93 7 and uh, uh, 98.1 in Boston to see what it does over here on the East Coast. Well, I, and then, I, I, mean, I, I, I know uh, CD, uh, yeah, CD, CT. <laughs> you know, all my friends uh, back home are going to smack me for that one, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, CT uh, has got like a hot mixtape coming out soon. I, I would, I, I would Google that and try to get a hold of that person. And be like, hey, put that song on there. I, I guarantee that would be probably one of the top hits. I, I mean, I need, uh, I need that. So, I mean, if you got the plug, or I got, if I get some direction or way to do it, like, I, I would do it because I mean, I think. That like that song, it it it, it complements a lot of uh, songs that might be on a mixtape. You know what I mean? Like on a mixtape, everybody will get crazy hard just for no reason. And that song will, I, me personally, I think it will propel that mixtape to sell. And then that's just another avenue lane open for like you know Connecticut artists or you know what I mean myself. Being an artist, I mean, however they play out, it's just a, a way to open up more doors. So I'm, I'm with it. So I mean, if anybody listening, tired rainwater, you know, saying contact me. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. You know, saying the name is all the same. Mike Fever, look me up. You know, what I'm saying let's let's work. Well, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely will. Uh, see, it's hard though to do a plug because. On one end, I would, you know, I want to help you out. On the other end, I'm afraid that you know, give it to somebody else. They're gonna try to steal your shit. <laughs> I help. I again, I've learned from the best. Tony Benjamin and Nichols. I got the the SR22 done. I got the the writers copyright. <laughs> I got the poor man copyright. 
I, I've learned from the best. So if, if you want to steal it, I got Scott Cable on deck. It's not a problem. <laughs> I hear you, man. I'll do what I can. I'll I'll try to talk to some people and see uh see what's up. Um, but anyway, man, it's been fun and all, but you know, like all good things, you know, must come to an end. But before we go, yeah. let's ask the audience what they thought of Rainwater, shall we? Yes. Nah, for real though. Um, if you like that song, Rainwater, or any of the other songs that uh, Mike Fever, you know, uh, you know, performed on the show, or you know, gave us the you know the copy to perform the right on the show, uh, get a hold of us. Uh, info at two local radio dot com. Any last words before you get out of here? Uh, no, like I said, I um, just want to do my shout out. Shout out to my home team boys, uh, Tony Benjamin, Bugs Black, um, Chief Soprano, um, uh, AD the General. Um, salute to everybody that's working on their craft and trying to make this dream a reality. You know what I'm saying? Live by my quote, get money and stay broke. I'm good. <laughs> And if, if people don't know what that means, uh, you basically clarify that you either have money or you stay broke. <laughs> basically. If you want money and nobody want to stay broke, so do what you got to do to get that money so that way the second part of that quote don't apply to you. Exactly. It, exactly. Well, it was a blast speaking with you again, Mike Fever. I'm sure we'll have you on again. But, uh, yes, thank you. You have your, uh, on behalf of Two Local, you have yourself a wonderful evening. Have a great night. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. And sorry about Bye. the late start. Bye. All right.